Brother Steve came here, he preached a message about resetting. There's the reset right there. Coming back. To what? To the heart of worship. And all worship is, worship isn't what, what we do here. Worship is the way we live our lifestyle. It's how we behave, it's how we act, it's how we, we carry, it's how we do business. It's how we fellowship. It's how we interact with one another. how we love one another. It's what we're willing to lay down for God's purpose. Well, what is God's purpose? He's building a family. It's all he's doing. It's all he's ever been doing. You know, we, and it says I'm sorry. We all need repentance. Repentance again is part of the lifestyle. And all it is is a change. I mean, you know, I said last week, everybody needs a little home improvement. We all need a little home improvement. But God knows. And He knows those that are willing to stick it out. And God has a people. Let me reassure you, God has a people on planet Earth, but He's even got a people beyond planet Earth. And He's building that family. He has that corporate son, and he's building that corporate son. And you know the key is that this is what they said in Sunday school. What is the measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ? No more you. Come on now. There's only going to be one I am in, in, in it, and it's going to be him. But in the beauty of it is, it encompasses us because we be in him. That's, we talk about the flames, the flames of fire. It's just trying to burn you up. Home improvement. Get rid of all the wood hay, the stubble. You said it. You sang it. It was, it was perfect. It was perfect. It's exactly what God's not only what He's saying today but what the Lord has been saying because it's what? Oh yeah. The same story. And isn't it amazing that even out there it's the same story. You see the repeat of the same mess over and over and over and over again. And God deals with the people. Isn't it cool that God will talk to his people and say the same thing over and over and over again until they get it? Or really, until they become all that he is. That gives us great hope. And the promise is in that. That God, that we as God's people, be confident that he that began that work. Remember Seamus? What did I say? God doesn't really care so much about how it all started. Doesn't care about the past. That's why he says he puts all that stuff behind. What he's looking for is down the road. And our better days are always ahead of us. Because our darkest day is where? Oh, yeah. When he took us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. We think we go through struggles in life. You've heard me say this. And we think, oh God, we're having a dark day. No. That day was in your past. Because now as a child of God, every day is brighter and brighter and brighter until the noonday. Or until the fullness of the Christ. Amen. Amen. Love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate all of you. Truth of the matter is, I appreciate all God's people. Because like I like I say, I say it over and over and over again. I'm like a broken record sometimes.
Um, you know what? I don't think I need to chair today. I'm overcoming. Now, if I can get rid of the glasses, then I'll really be overcoming. <laughs> now you made me lose my thought. Anyways. But God's looking for, oh, I know what I was going to say. The conviction. Isn't it amazing? Let me, let me just, we had a little conversation. Isn't it amazing that how the world has f- phrases, right? Or words. But then the church has them. But then through the ages, how we start changing them words, and they end up having different meanings because of, for lack of better words, culture. Or the culture that we tend to live in. Well, we know the culture we're supposed to live in. We just sang the song all about it. It's the heart of worship. It's the heart that would please the Father at all times. So that would be the culture. But isn't it amazing that, let's just use the word, well, we've all heard it. Nobody likes it. Oh, I just used one, repentance, right? Tends to end up, in the church, tends to be a, you know, a poo-poo word. Nobody likes it, right? But repentance, you know the cool thing about repentance? For one thing, it's a gift. You just can't, you can be sorry. We can all be sorry for screw-ups, mess-ups, whatever you want to call it, making, making dumb decisions. You know you know the difference? Our brother Tim says this all the time. The difference between a dumb decision and a stupid decision is, one, you do it really because you didn't know any better, and the other one, you just did it willingly. That's, the, that's really the difference between the two. So a lot of times we become sorry or, you know, a little on the guilty side for the fact that we've made mistakes or whatever. But in that, isn't it cool that God will grant you repentance? But you know when God grants you repentance? You know how you really know that God grants you repentance and that you received it? You put it behind you. You put it behind you. And then you can walk, not in a haughty with your chin up, but with your chin up. Not with your face down to the ground and keep walking towards the mark. That's good stuff there. There's safety the way God does it. Isn't it amazing how God has all these in his word? He has all these safety nets. What do you think the gathering is all about? It's a safety net for one another. That way no one person can say, I got it all. That's why he puts you in a family. That's why every joint supplies. That's why we need one another. Those are all safety nets that God puts. Because remember, what was the first, what was the problem in the garden? Pride. It was a pride issue. I don't need you, God. I can do it on my own. What's the problem in the world? I don't need you, God. I can do it on my own. What's the problem in most churches? Come on now. Because what happens is we, we end up getting culturized by the culture around us. And what Jesus is looking for us to be is Jesus-arise. So we would, right, express who he is in the culture that we live in. We say it all the time. He puts you in the world, but he never told you to be like it. And there's where the key is dealing with the heart of worship. It becomes your lifestyle. It becomes the way that you live, the way you express yourself. And I, you know what? We all have areas, like I said, for home improvement. Because all we got to do is have somebody go cross-grain. Pastor Dale, you say this all the time. All you got to do is go cross-grain to somebody stinking, and you'll find out how holy they really are. But see, in that, If we really have a heart for the Lord, we'll seek a place of repentance. That God will bring change. See, that's, you think about this. You think about even the word judgment. Nobody likes that. I was saying this to my mom. 
But you know, if you go to the court, if somebody does you wrong, and you go into the court, right? And the judge hears all, everybody hears all the testimonies, right? Slaps the gavel down, finds it in your favor. That's a good judgment. And see, in all of God's judgments are unto righteousness. And if there's no judgment, then it's going to get to the word I'm going to talk about. Then there's no fear of the Lord. And one of the things that we can see, look, we're not dumb people. All you got to do is look around. There is no fear of the Lord. And the cool thing about it is, is here I've been talking about Daniel, right? Anybody remember Daniel and his buds? Where were they at? Remember, they were just teenagers. 17, 18 years old, 16 years old, right? And here they were in a foreign land. And oh yeah, who put them in that foreign land? Y'all remember? Verse number two said the Lord did it. Oh yeah, who put you in the world? Come on now. The correlation between the two. All it is, it's the same story. Come on now, folks. It's the same story over and over and over again. All he is is changing people. But he's still looking for the same thing. And out of the ages of the people, he picks a one here and a one there and a one over here. And he puts them all together and he's building this family. Why do you think, come on now, I'm going to jump way into a message that I'm going to share maybe a couple, couple weeks from here. You think, of, you think of this. We always talk about there's Daniel, right? And then we always say Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, right? Anybody knows what the real name is? We know that Daniel was Daniel. Well, who were the other guys? Hananiah, Azariah, and Meshach, right? That was their Hebrew names. Isn't it so cool that they got themselves in a predicament that God put them in? That they weren't willing to bow down to anything other than because they didn't want to violate God, right? But isn't this so cool? This is this whole thing about this song that really got me. They were so, the heart of worship, they were so in love with their God, so in love with Jesus, but so in love with one another, that they weren't willing to defile not only themselves, but those that they were joined to, nor their God. Or put, like I talked about all last week, put a blemish on him because he'd already become the blemish for y'all. That's pretty cool. That's good stuff. That's a message a couple weeks down the road still because I'm backtracking. Because one thing about Daniel... Chapter 1, verse 4, you know, I went into Ephesians 5, I, I read all that stuff. God is dealing with, look, if you've been in the waters of baptism, been circumcised, cut off, the axe has been laid to the root, it is not a nature issue that we have. Now it's, it's the heart of worship. It's the character. It's how we live our daily lives coming in in going out, how we live with our families, how we treat one another, how we move, right? Because the Bible says we live and we move and we have our being where? In him. So you're not outside of him. Even though he has put you in the world, you're not, you're not outside of God. You're not outside of heaven. You're not outside of the realm of the spirit. Even if you choose to be. It's choices. Okay? And what I find interesting, this is verse number four. Daniel chapter one, verse number four. Remember we dealt last week. Isn't it amazing that the world was looking for the same thing that God is looking for in a people? Think about it. Right here, look. With, look at verse people with no blemish. Let me ask you, would you want a God with a blemish? 
Because remember when he dealt with his people and he said, hey, when you made a God out of stone or wood or whatever, and then you got yourself in a fix that couldn't be fixed, and I'm the only one that can deliver you out of that fix that you got yourself in, but because of your stiff neck and hard-heartedness, you go cry out to that piece of wood or that stone and see if it'll deliver you. Come on now. This is how much God loves his people. In his judgments, right, will bring forth his mercy in a people. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and wisdom will keep you from doing, what was that word you preached on, Brother Bud? Oh yeah, wisdom. How do we learn wisdom? Oh yeah, by doing dumb stuff, stupid stuff. Oh yeah, and not doing them again. Isn't that what you preach? That was a good word. Matter of fact, Pastor Dale L. Frazier uses it all the time because you know what it was? It's a true word. And God's word is true. And God will allow you. He gives us the liberties, the freedoms, and he is looking to see how far we'll go towards him. Not to take the liberties and the freedoms because there's a lot of stuff we lay down. We worship. All right, so here we go. Everybody with me? If I was to title this message today, this would be the title. It says, The Character of Wisdom or the Christ. So here we go. So they were looking for people with no blemish, well-favored. What's, how do we always say this in, in Christianese? Well, I'm well favored and highly blessed to the Lord. Right? Anybody ever hear that saying before? Come on now. You're, they're, look, well favored and highly blessed to the Lord. That's what you are. You know why? Because God picked you. And guess what he wants you to express? He wants you to express to be an expression of no blemish and, oh yeah, well favored and highly blessed of the Lord. I added the, the, the blessed part in there, but it's the same thing. They were looking on an outward. God's always looking on an inward. Mankind looks outward. God always looks inward. Mankind is trying to fix things from the outward. God always fixes things from the inward. That's how he works. That's, to me, that's cool. Because what good does it do if you prettied up this thing here, but the inside is rotting and decaying? Remember that? Remember Brother Dale when he came here and he preached the message about good bones? The, the renovation show? It had, the, there's, look, there's good, look. God made man, even fallen man, there's still good bones. But without the renovation process of the Holy Ghost, and being cut off from the old, the bones mean absolutely nothing. They end up being scattered bones. Okay? So here we go. So, well favored. Skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding. And here's the key. To have the substance. I know it doesn't say substance there. This was my paraphrase. To have the substance to stand in the king's, listen up folks, the king's capacity. Isn't that what the Christ is? Isn't that what God's people is? If he said that all power, all authority has been given to me, but then he gave it back to the church, and he being the head of the body, right? And this is what, this is what, this is what, oh my God, this is going to kill somebody. 
You know what your greatest ministry is? First right here. Keep this thing clean. Come on now. What good is it? If you can't keep, if you can't minister right here, right? When I say right here, I'm talking, he's still the head. Right here. If you can't minister right here, you ain't going to have any outreach. Because you know what it is? This is the way, this is the way, this is the way pastor, you say it all the time. Because your kids, what they'll do, they're going to watch you. Come on now. Your kids, they'll watch you. And they're going to look what you do. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to do what you do. Not what you say, what you do. And I think pastor used to throw this in with excess. All you got to do is look around. Come on now. And that's no condemnation on anybody. Because the truth of the matter is, I find this out. I find this to be so true. God can pick you, but you can kick all the way to the pricks, and you can go to live in hell all your life, and that can be your choice, and have nothing to do with anything that your parents did. Oh, yeah, that's why we got a prodigal list here, right? Come on now. You don't think God knows? That's good stuff. It's good to be on the prodigal list. You know why? Because God put his finger in your life. And you just made some bad decisions. But God's always fishing. He's always fishing. Right? He was a fisherman. All right, here we go. Everybody liking this so far? Okay. So. You take blemish, well-favored, wisdom, Knowledge and understanding, what do you got? I know it's a play on the numbers. Isn't it cool that God is looking for grace in the people? Truth of the matter is, the world's looking for grace in the people too. The only difference is, God knows it, most of the world doesn't know it. All right, here we go. I'll try to go slow here, Colleen. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. You want to do a real good study? Here's a real good study. Just word search. Put in words like mercy, judgment. Um, what was the other one? The phrase, the fear of the Lord. Put them in your, do a word search. Start looking at how many times they're used, where they're used, and how they're used. And then look at, the, then take judgment and righteousness and run the two together and see how many of them correlate to one another. Remember what I said earlier? All of God's judgments are unto righteousness. God doesn't, I mean, would you want to, let me ask you this. If, 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 you, if you got in an accident and it wasn't your fault, and then the person was going to sue you, and you went to court, and you found out that the lawyers were crooked and the judge was crooked, do you think you'd get righteous judgment? Would you want to be in that court? No, that's why we sing a song like, better to be one day in his court. That's that, that's that experience that Brother Stephen was talking about in Sunday school. One day, one experience, it changed your life forever. But you know what you got to do? Oh, yeah, remember the ministry back to here? you got to keep flaming that, those ambers in that fire to keep that thing burned. you got to throw. It was the people's responsibility to bring the wood, to throw it on so the fire kept burning. That's why this is the most important ministry. But guess what you do? Then once you got it, once you know, you lay this down, and then your ministry becomes your wife and your kids. See how powerful that works? You don't, you don't lay it all up for yourself. You have the responsibility for yourself, right? You know what you said, David? Sometimes we have to get a little, what? Soft reboot. Sometimes some of us need a hard reboot, but it's better to have a soft reboot than a kick in the pants, right? I've been there. I've had a kick in the pants. doesn't feel good. 
because the deposit is in there. All you got to do is dig it out. And then when God puts you in a family, right, now this becomes your ministry. That's why every joint supplies. You know, we go through all these things. Every joint supplies, right? All this stuff. That's why the anointing, it breaks the yoke. That's why we come in. The anointing on all of us. It's all these phrases that we've heard for all these years. It's how this thing works. And there's safety in it. Why do you think he says submit to one, one to another? Most of us, when we get into the issue of submitting, we all have a hairy conniption. Because everybody wants to have it their way. But you know what I learned about submission? There's safety in submission. You know what it does? Oh, yeah. You stay under. It's humility. They talked about it today. Hey, it's better to go sit in the back, all right, and be invited to the front than to come up to the front and say, hey, your seat, you're in somebody else's seat. Go sit in the back. I heard what she said. What are you going to do when you get invited to the front? Are you going to come? Not. What'd she say? Not today? Oh, my gosh. You keep that pew warm. All right, so here we go. Everybody with me today? I love you. I, you know what? I don't desire anything other than to see this people and whatever else God brings in or whatever he does to make it. Exactly what Stephen said and what whoever else said to make it to the fullness of what God desires. One thing, I, I talk to my mom a lot about this. I don't want to see anybody left out. I mean, come on now. Would you want to see anybody left out? That's why when, when, our, kids, when our kids go haywire, we see our friends go hay, haywire, we get people that come into the church, and then we think, oh, my God, they're going haywire, they don't, whatever. That's why there's this building of this body. Because, look, it, remember what I said here? This was Nebuchadnezzar that was looking for these character traits in a people. It, and isn't it amazing? God's looking for the same thing. They're using it for one thing. God's going to use it for a whole nother thing. So don't think just because you have it in here that something out there isn't going to try to draw on what you got from in here. That's the subtlety of the serpent. And that's the way it works. And it does work. And if you're not careful... We get down the road a few days, weeks, months, years. Sometimes we want to, how did I ever get here? Right? And we always pray it never be too late. All right, here we go. So Proverbs uh, chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the holy is understanding. All right? Remember what he said? Remember back there in Daniel 4? What did they say they were looking for? No blemish, well-favored, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Well, how are you going to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding? It's only going to come by the fear of the Lord. And the fear is, we, we can go through this thing a million different ways. Well, what's the fear of the Lord, Brother Tim? I remember pastor, you say it like this, scare the hell out of you. Right? We don't, we don't like that, but that would, be, that would be a judgment. You would never want to be on the wrong side of the fence with God, right? It's the heart of worship. You always want to be on the righteous side of where God is standing and how he's dealing with you and how he's dealing with us. Come on now. Because whether we like it or not or whether we think it or not, what we do 
When God sets you in, look, when God sets you in, sets you in the body, look, let me, ask, let me ask the parents this. What your kids do, does it affect you? Then I don't have to say anymore, right? Y'all got the point? Come on, we don't like that because we live in the United States of America. We, we all love freedom, liberties, all this. We all love to do our own thing. But the truth of the matter is what we do affects. Oh, yeah, look at the miracle next to you. Come on, look at the miracle next to you. Say, hey, miracle. What I do affects you. And what you do affects me. It really does. You think Babylon's mass confusion? Why do you think we have such mass confusion? It's because most people don't believe what they do affects somebody else in the church. Because they still think, or most people still think, me and Jesus. As long as it's me and Jesus. Remember I started out the whole ministry thing. It's going to be you first. God has no grandchildren. It's you and him. And then it expands. And look, Christ Life Fellowship is bigger than us. I've already said that. We already know that. Look around. If you could see all the churches that are on planet Earth, it's bigger than that. Because he talked about Enoch. But you know what it says in Hebrews about Enoch? Oh, yeah. All those that went, they ain't complete without, oh, yeah, us. Well, guess what? We're not then. We're not complete without them. Well, we can't even see them, Brother Tim. Guess what? Remember when Moses showed up on the Mount of Transfiguration? And who did he show up with? His buddy Elijah. They were in two different ages. Isn't that amazing? They knew who one another was. They even knew who Jesus was because they were talking about Jesus. And what were they talking about? Anybody remember what they were talking about? Oh, yeah, him going to the cross. And isn't it a matter that the three buds, right, the three dudes, right, Peter, James, and John, they knew who they were. How do you think all that happened? All right. Here we go. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 18, or 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. All right? I just want to reestablish this. I know we know this, but you know what? It's good for us to hear it again. Oh, I know what I did. Oh, no, never mind. I was going to read it in a different translation, but I'll read it in King James. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. You ever wonder why when you go out and you witness the people and they think that you got like two heads? Well, isn't it amazing that the Bible tells you why. And we think, oh, they just don't love me. has nothing to do with you. It's one of the things I learned from my mom. She always said this. Did you not always say this? When you, you know what you say. You say a lot of stuff, right? That's why I'm trying to get her up here to share because the deposit of God in her. But the, one of the things my mom always said, when you witness to people, look, you, my... Y'all know when the door is open, and it isn't that you're shoving Jesus down somebody's throat. It's you just having conversations, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he just shows up. Come on now. You ever have a conversation with somebody, and all of a sudden, Jesus just shows up? Come on. And so then you all, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, it's a threesome here in the aspect. It's me, whoever you're talking to, and here's Jesus. He just showed up. So then you start having this conversation. And you know when the door is open, but you also know when the door gets shut. And you know what my mom always said? This is what my mom always said to me. They didn't reject you. They rejected when Jesus showed up. How many times did Jesus show up in your life, and you rejected him, and you shut the book? Because, G oh, yeah, it's the heart of worship. Oh, yeah, but, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because he's like a flame of fire trying to burn you up. The barbecue, make you a pile of ashes, a finished work. Not individually, 
corporately. And we look at it, I'm, I'm telling you, I hear the, grind, or the gears grinding. We think, how in God's name will that ever happen? I'll tell you how it happens. It happens in a remnant. It happens like, just like these boys here. These boys here in Daniel, there's just a few of them. And they would refuse to do anything to violate not only themselves, their buddies that they were joined to, or God. Can you imagine, can you imagine them three boys, they know they're going to get thrown in this fire, modern day Christians, three of them standing there, they're heating that fire up, they're probably looking at one another, their minds probably going, and they're like, nope. Come on now. And we think it's changed. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Okay, here we go. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy, listen up folks, the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? If you know, can you tell me? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Come on now. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Isn't that crazy? For the Jews, or here's another one, for the Christians, they require a sign. And the world, they seek after wisdom. Right? But we preach Christ. Who's Christ? Is that just Jesus? Or is that head and body? Or is that the family of God? Or is that the overcomer? Or is that, can I, want me to keep going? Is that the branch man? How many, how many of these metaphors have we've learned all these years? Cruce, uh, Christ crucified is a people. It's what Brother David talked about. It's the foundation and the roof and all that's in between. Oh yeah, it's like the anointing that starts from the head and goes all the way down to the hem and nobody's left out unless what? Oh yeah, you remove yourself from it or you choose to be. Okay. Here we, is that good? Okay. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Christian a stumbling block and, to do, and unto the world foolishness. Is that not true? I can say Christian here because the Bible tells me that the true Christian is those that worship what? Or I mean the, the true Jew. Is him that worships what? That's why I can say, instead of using the word Jew, I can say Christian. It's the same thing, right? It's the same people. God's people. All right. But unto them which are called, listen up, those that are called, both Christian and non-Christian, right? Or in the world, where'd you all come from? And you didn't even know he called you, did you? So then when you're born into church, right, and you've been brought up in the church, you're called. It's kind of like the fall. Right? It's my kids were like that. And Savani's kids were like that with the youth group. The little ones, right? They weren't of age to go, but they just entered in because of the fall. Not saying that you just enter in, but your kids. Look, Gabby and Seamus, that's why we dedicated your baby. That's why most of us, that's why we dedicate our babies. It's by default. We present them to the Lord that God will do the work that he's doing in us, that now he will do it in them that they might become part of the family. 
Okay, here we go. All right. But unto, uh, unto them which are called, both Jew and the Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God, the weakness of God. Come on now. How many of us? That's why it says, let the weak say that I am strong, and let the poor, the worst thing a Christian could ever say, the words uttered out of their mouth, is I'm weak and I'm poor. Because it's in direct violation to what the Word of God says. Because that, you know what that tells me? You know what that tells me? It tells me that you put your power in the wrong place and you put your riches in the wrong place. That's what that tells me. Because Brother Ronnie got up here and already told you the value of the deposit that God put in you. Far outweighs any amount of money. Far outweighs any type of car, house, whatever boat, whatever you, whatever the world can offer. Look, why do you do you think it not funny? Hello, do you not think it not funny that when Jesus went to the wilderness, when the testing came, when the right when he was tempted, go through the story and read what he was tempted by. The very th- same things you're tempted by. Okay. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us. Here we go. I didn't lose my point. My point was dealing with wisdom. How do we get wisdom? From the fear of the Lord. Now we're finding out who wisdom is. Unto us, because God, um, or in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorifies, or glorifieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen? Amen. I like this one. Proverbs 24. Verse 3 and 4. Through wisdom is the family built. And by understanding, it's established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. What's he talking about there? You know what he's talking about there? He's talking about the family. He's talking about people. He's talking about the kingdom of God. That's what he's talking about. Look around. He's talking about you. And in every great house, there are vessels. I don't know if I'm going to finish this up. But I'll make my point. I'll give you all the scriptures and you can go run them. All right? Because if I say them, I'll go too fast and Colleen won't be able to throw them up fast enough. Second Chronicles 19 and 9. 
And he charged them, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Remember we sang the song? The heart of worship. That's all God's looking for. Looking for a people. Clean hands, pure heart, perfect heart. Faithful in all that you do. How you conduct yourself. Come on now. How we conduct ourselves, not only individually, but how we conduct ourselves corporately when we walk out the doors. How we act in here. How we conduct ourselves. How when we gather, if we're willing to gather. When, when the flow of the Spirit is in the house, are we willing to allow our portion to be thrown into the pot? If I can say it like that. Because then the great apothecary can do what? Oh yeah, stir up the big pot. All right. Job 28 and 28. These are all verses that deal with the fear of the Lord. Okay? And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil. All right? Here's a, here's a good... Well, Brother Tim, what's evil? Anything that's opposed to God. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Remember when Brother Steve came here? How do you, what, if you take evil and you spell it backwards, what's it spell? So anything that would be opposing or opposite of life is evil. Not, not bias life, God life. Because see, we look at it too short. We look at it what we can walk out in this life. He said to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But it goes beyond what you can see. Remember? He's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Remember how the Bible says, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Pastor said, Pastor Tim said, Brother Dale, Brother Varner, and you know, we can go on through the names. They're still alive. Oh, yeah. Didn't Brother David say, tell us, where, oh, where are they alive? Oh, yeah, because he is what? Written it into your hearts, and you become living epistles, written and read of all men. That's why Pastor always says, when you go out into your world. Isn't this pretty cool how Daniel and all of this, they were doing the same things and having some of the same struggles that we have Oh, yeah, in 2020. That's it, Brother Bob. Nothing new, is it? And you know the cool thing about it is? You go read the book of Ezra. You go read the book of Nehemiah. Go read the book of Esther. Oh, yeah, go read the Bible and find out you ain't any different than any of them. And you want to know a really cool thing about it is? Think about this. Think about this. This is something that Sister Sandra and myself were talking to, and I mentioned something to Brother Steve Everett about it. You take the canon of the scriptures, all the people they talked about, and then you take all the ages. I said, I used the word, they wrote about maybe a tithe of the people, but it was probably only about 1% of the people. Well, what were all the rest of the people doing? Oh, yeah living their godly life, doing what they were supposed to do. What, you don't think? You think that just those few people that he talked about was all that there was? Oh, no, because remember when he was dealing with Elijah and Elijah went and ran from Jezebel and he said, and, and the Lord said, what are you doing hiding in here? And he said, oh, she's going to come. And he said, I got 7,000 people. And he didn't name a one of them people. Because you know the most important book to be named in? What book, Brother Stephen? Oh, the Lamb's Book of Life. And isn't that amazing? That that's the one that you can have your name white out. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Okay, here we go. I'll read a few more and then we can go home. 
Psalms 19 and 9. Oh, I think it's supposed to be 119 and 9. No? Oh, 19 and 9. I'm sorry. The fear of the Lord... Listen. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. How do you like them apples? Remember where the, in the Proverbs where it says, buy the truth and sell it not. Here we go. 111, Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. That's pretty good. And then there's a whole bunch of them in the Proverbs. The fear, Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, but fools, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 1 and 29. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Remember when I said we make dumb decisions and then we make stupid decisions. We choose the wrong. Okay? We, I've done it. This, this helps me when I read this. That God's for us. He's not against us. Proverbs 2 and 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. Everybody, oh, I want to find out all about God. Well, get the fear of the Lord. Because that's what his word just said. It says if you fear him, you'll find all about him. Find out all about him. That's pretty cool. Remember? Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. Eight and thirteen. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil or anything opposite of life, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Proverbs nine and ten. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Well, who's the holy? Jesus. He is the holy one. Proverbs 10 and 27. The fear of the Lord prolongs your days. You want to live a long life? Have the fear of the Lord. But the years of the wicked should be shortened. And just what you see on this planet is not what he's talking about. I have to reiterate that. Because sometimes we only look as far as we can see. And God is way bigger than what we can see. Proverbs 14, 26 and 27. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Remember when Philip said, having confidence in this very thing. Well, how am I ever going to have confidence in this very thing. What very thing are you talking about, Pastor Tim? That he that began a work in me is going to finish it. How's that going to happen? Oh, yeah. Having the fear of the Lord in my life. Okay? And his children, my kids, your kids, our kids, shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. That's pretty cool. So that tells me death has a lot of snares to try to do what? Oh yeah, trip you up, hook you up, catch you, and draw you away. Oh, sounds like the world, doesn't it? Okay. 15 and 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therein. 
That's Brother Ryan's message. Okay? Proverbs 15 and 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Instruction. Teaching. Nobody likes to be taught. Everybody knows everything. Just ask them. I'm serious. You think I'm joking. I'm not joking. I'm serious. All you got to do is ask somebody. Everybody knows everything. You can't tell anybody anything nowadays. Everybody thinks they know everything. It's not what this says. Okay? The fear of the Lord is instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. That's pretty cool. The fear of the Lord tends to life, and he that has it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. That was uh, Proverbs 19 and 23, sorry. Proverbs 22 and, and 4. By humility and the, fear, and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Now, isn't that something? He tells you over in the one scripture that it's better to have a little with the fear of the Lord, but then he tells you in this scripture that if you have the fear of the Lord, you're going to have what? Riches, honor, and life. That's pretty cool. Here we go. Got a couple more, all right? Can you hold on? Let uh, Proverbs 23 and 17, let not thine heart envy sinners. Oh my God, how many times have we done that? But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Okay? And then I want to read Isaiah 11 out of the Passion. Okay? Isaiah 11. You ready? Verse 1. It's called the branch of the Lord. Who's the branch? Who? Only some of us know who the branch is. You ought to be shouting for joy. We are the branch. We are the branch man. We're connected to the vine. The cut off stump of Jesse will sprout and a fruitful branch will grow from his roots. The spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. The spirit of extraordinary wisdom the spirit of perfect understanding, the spirit of wise strategy, the spirit of mighty power, the spirit of revelation, and the spirit of the fear of Yahweh. He will, or he will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He will neither judge by appearances nor make his decisions based on rumors. With righteousness, he will uphold justice for the poor and defend the lowly of the earth. His words will be like a scepter of power that conquers the world, and with his breath, he will slay the lawless one. Righteousness will be his warrior's sash, and faithfulness his belt. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I don't think you can get any better than that. And my last one is Isaiah 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Listen up, folks. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. These guys that we were dealing with here in Daniel, this is what they live by. This is how, oh, we sing the song? This is how we overcome. This is what we need to live by. Not saying we don't. I'm trying to encourage you. 
It's great to have all the promises of God preached to you, but guess what? There are conditions to the promises. Reward comes with good behavior. Good behavior comes with the fear of the Lord. It's true. Because if you don't fear God, your behavior is not going to be good. Amen? Amen. I love you. Um, somebody said they were going someplace. Do we have to pray for somebody? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to pray for Ed. All right? I'm going to pray for you, Ed. Did you enjoy what I shared today? You got the fear of the Lord? You're all right then. You really are. Because that's really all that matters. Not only to you, but all of us. Because then we know that he's got it in his hands. We take it out of our hands, we put it in his hands. And then we have nothing to fear. Amen? So come on, stand up, get in the middle, Ed. We can get a chair there for him. We want to pray. I love you all. Pray we have ears to hear. Pray God will just continue to flow in the house, flow in one another, fellowship with one another. Don't be afraid to invite somebody over and have fellowship. Don't be afraid to talk to the in-laws, the outlaws, and all the rest of them. Pray for the prodigals. Come on now. Every family has them. Amen. All right. Come on.